In this video, we're going to talk about the second technology Java offers to keep track of session. And the technology is called session. Uh, to be more specific, it's a class called HTTP session. So we're going to use an instance of this HTTP session class to keep track of the session. Okay, if you remember a session is really a period, of, a period of time devoted to a certain activity, for example, request, response, request and response. So an HTTP session object is created by Tomcat when the first request comes in. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so by the time request comes, session object is already there. It's created by Tomcat. It's very similar to servlet and request and response objects. They are created by uh, Tomcat, okay? Uh, but this is different, but in Cookie it's different, right? Cookie, we have to, we as developers of the backend, we have to use Cookie, Cookie equals new Cookie, right? But for session, this object is created by, uh, you know, automatically. Uh, and we can save, and we means uh, the web developers can save data related to this session uh, so that all the subsequent requests belonging to the same session, remember I said one session have multiple requests, can share the data. So it's a really good way to share data across all the different requests. So the session persists for a specific time period. A session usually corresponds to one user who may visit a site many times. Okay, so let's look at this object. So how do we get this object in Java? So let's come back to IntelliJ. Now this is my uh, session demo one under uh, package session. Okay, so double click session demo one, and here it is. Uh, we have a uh, URL session demo one. So in a do post or in do get, how do we get access to the instance of this uh, HTTP session? It's very simple. We can use request dot get session. Now this one returns the session created by Tomcat. This is the session. Okay, the type is HTTP session. Now how do we store something in session? It's very simple. We're using something called a get, I'm sorry, set, set attribute. So in this case, I'm going to set attribute. The attribute name is msg, and the value of this attribute is hello session. I'm sure many students have seen this before. Is Remember, we have, we have actually used something called request.set attribute. Okay, so what's the difference between request.set attribute and session.set set attribute. Okay, so uh, one obvious difference is they're different objects, right? <laughs> the, ma the major difference is uh, if you set some attribute in request, okay? Now, a different request have no access to the attribute you set in the current request because remember, a session have many requests and every request is independent, okay? If you save an attribute in request one, then request two cannot access the attribute you set in request one. But if you set attribute in a session, then all the requests belong to the same session have access to this MSG attribute. So that's the power of session. It's really powerful. We can, we can let um, uh, different requests share the same message or share the same value. Okay, let's look at demo two. So in demo two, uh, we're going to get this attribute. So here is uh, experiment. So in demo one, we get this session, we save something in this session. And in demo two, we're going to get this uh, attribute. And in demo three, uh, I'm gonna show you how do we uh, use J session ID. Okay, so let me show you this uh, experiment. So let me launch it and press enter and comes back here, nothing printed, okay? Then we're going to session demo two. Now, attention, this, be, so there are two requests made, right? Session demo one and session demo two. There are two different requests, but they belong to the same session. So if I press enter and come back to IntelliJ, and guess what? This servlet, have, can access an attribute called MSG and print its value, hello session. In other words, the second request actually get the value that's set by uh, the first request. 
Okay. All right. So that's the uh, basic usage of HTTP session. It's very simple. You only need to remember uh, how to get a session and how to set something in it or get something from it. Okay. So in the previous vi uh, video, we talked about how to get HTTP session instance created by Tomcat and set attribute and get attribute. So all the requests, all the responses in the same session have access to the value that you store in the same session. The next question is, when I actually, actually when I learned this, is how does Tomcat associate an incoming request to a particular session? So let me explain. For example, uh, let's go back to uh, this picture here. Okay, so here is a browser, here is a server. Okay, now one request comes in, let's say this is Bingyang, one request comes in and cookie demo one uh, will serve this request and Tomcat will create a session object related to Bingyang. Okay, so there's a session object here stored in Tomcat server. All right, so then my second request comes in and guess what? Tomcat knows that this request belongs to that session object. So that's why the second request can also access things that stored by the first request. But let's say we have a different user. Let's say Dr. Sugar comes in here and access the same server. And that's a new session, right? That session is different from my session because my session is, you know, how I talk to the server. And when Dr. Sugar makes the first request, Tomcat will create the second session object and store everything that Dr. Sugar stores there. So when Dr. Sugar makes the second and the third request, Tomcat knows that second and third request from Dr. Sugar will be associated with a different session object. The question is, how does Tomcat, why Tomcat is so smart that can differentiate different requests? It knows that this request belongs to this session object and that request belongs to that session object. Okay, so Tomcat needs a way to figure it out. And the question is J session ID. So let me explain this process. Okay, take a look at this picture and follow these numbers. So browser make the first request to Tomcat and Tomcat will create a session object for this request. Okay, because the first request actually starts this session. So that's the, that's the moment that the session object gets created. So that's number three. Create a session object with ID A2D64EEAE3D89A. Okay, so it's an internal object inside the RAM of Tomcat server. And this object has an ID, and this ID is in red. And next, Tomcat will upturn, uh, will se actually send this ID back. So this is one, this is two, this is three, and then this is four. So in the response of the, to the first request, Tomcat will create a cookie automatically. And the cookie's name is called JSession ID with the ID of this session object in the RAM of server. Okay, so the browser will accept this uh, session ID and save it in the, in the browser. So in the next request, number five, the browser will attach this cookie with this request. So when this re request comes in Tomcat, Tomcat will automatically retrieve this JSession ID and find and search in the RAM, do we have a session object with ID equal to the ID in the request? If we do, then Tomcat knows, okay, this request is in this session. In other words, this session, this request is a subsequent uh, uh, request of the previous one. So that's how Tomcat associate a request to a session object. So by using J session ID. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, a programming demo. So session demo three. So in session demo three, when user first access session demo three, we're going to get this session, okay? And this is the session, and we can actually print this session. 
And this servlet is going to create a cookie called J session ID. And we're going to get ID from session and use this as the value of J session ID. And we can set the lifetime or the max age to 60 seconds multiply uh, uh, 60, that's one hour, right? And then send this response back to the client. So let me show you how we can do this. So before uh, I press enter, I'm going to clear all the cookies, more tools, clear browser data, and I'm gonna clear all the data here. Then I'm gonna press F12 and monitor the traffic. So I'm gonna press enter. As you can see in the request, so the first time I make this request, there are no cookies at all because I clear all the cookies and the first request is just to session demo three. So the first request has no cookie at all. So we have accept, we have connection, host, but there's no cookie. And then remember when we access session cookie uh, session demo three, and this one create a cookie with name J session ID and the value is equal to session dot get ID, right? So in the response, we're supposed to have a cookie card, J session ID with session ID. And the max age is 60 times 60, which is uh, 3,600. And it also tells us the expired date. Okay. Then the next time I visit this website, for example, if I go to uh, demo one, okay, go to demo one. Make sure you remember this. The last four digit is one four a six, one four a six. So if I press enter, this is the second request. In the request headers, and we have this J session ID, and the last four digit is one four a six. Remember, this session ID is set by demo three, but if we access demo one, the new request has this J session ID with it. What if the browser closes during a session? Now, uh, if you remember what I said before, by default, if a user closes browser, uh, then the session terminates. Then uh, all the cookies uh, will be deleted by the browser. You lost all the cookies. Uh, if you didn't set a max age to your J session ID cookie, then once you close your browser, it's gone. And then bad luck. Uh, because JSON ID is the only way or Tomcat can relate a, uh, can associate a request to uh, a, a session object. Because remember, uh, the first request actually triggers Tomcat to create a session object in RAM. Um, and the only way we, the subsequent request can go back to the session object is using the same session ID. But if the cookie is gone, then it looks like you lost the key and there's no way you can find the session object again. Uh, then that's, that's caused a problem, right? Now, if we have 1 million users, uh, they all lost their cookies and then we have 1 million session objects, they're dangling, right? They're called dangling objects. They, were, they, they, they can never be accessed again because they, we lost keys, we lost the G session ID. Uh, so G Tomcat server needs to have a way to clean them out. And by default, uh, after 30 minutes, no visit to one session object, Tomcat will automatically reclaim the space, okay? And you can change this time uh, by go to web.xml under conf, under where you installed Tomcat and change that, okay? Change the session timeout. By default, it's 30 minutes, but you can change it to one hour, two hour, and so on and so forth. Now, what if we want to persist J session ID longer even after we close the browser? There's one way we can do it, is using cookie.setMaxH, as you have seen in session demo three. In this case, we set it to 60 seconds multiply 60, which is one hour. Now, another problem is, what if the browser is live, is good, but the server restarts? Now, there are some, some chances that uh, the, uh, the CIT people will restart uh, a server uh, to get some issue fixed. And Tomcat has a feature called persist, uh, persistence across restarts. It will save everything in a file called sessions.ser when Tomcat shuts down normally. Okay, I have to let you know that when you shut it down normally, that is when we invoke dot forward slash shutdown.sh, 
it's not it's, it's it doesn't mean it's, it's it's crash if it crashes everything got lost right but if tomcat normally shuts down and normally restarts then all the sessions will be persisted there's no problem okay so during start it will attempt to load uh, this ser file to restore all the sessions so it, we can we can restart elegantly so what if the server wants to terminate the session okay remember what i said is a session starts when the browser makes the first request and the session will end when you close the browser okay that's from the client side now what if the server side says hey i want to terminate this this session uh, there is a one method called session.invalidate. So basically what happened is uh, uh, this server is telling Tomcat delete the current session object. So by deleting the current session object, then that automatically terminates uh, terminates the, the session. For example, here, if we in this demo one, we use uh, session request.get session dot uh, invalidate and this object get, get deleted. Then even though you have a request with the session ID, but this session ID no longer points to the object, or the object that the session ID points to get deleted. So that means, I'm sorry, this is an invalid session ID, please log in again, or please, do, uh, please uh, start a new session again. So let's talk about the advantages of using a session. So we can store any type of data, this time not on the client side, but on the server side. And you can save text, you can save uh, pictures, you can save files, all kinds of things in session object, okay, using set attribute. There's no size restriction, uh, really determines, determined by how large your RAM is, right? Uh, and a safe, uh, relative safe, because data is stored on the server side. Um, so that's the advantage of HTTP session. 